All right, let's go. All right, we are back playing Zero Escape 9 and 9, the Nonary Games. Things are starting to get a little bit crazier. The story's starting to pick up with Snake being dead now. Um, yeah, I wonder if anyone else is going to die. If they will escape the boat. We'll see. Let's, let's go. With that attempt at good humor, Junpei took a deep breath and began to walk. He jogged down the stairs at the end of the hallway and found himself staring at a large door. This door looks heavy. But it's not locked. I'm opening it. He took hold of the bar that served as his doorknob and shoved it down. The room beyond stopped him in his tracks. It was gargantuan and made entirely of metal. None of the accents of wood or tile he'd seen in the rest of the ship. This room was purely functional, but utterly tremendous. What is this room? Whoa, what the hell is this? Santa got out a few words before awe stole the rest of them. The rest were too stunned to offer anything more than gasps. This has to be the biggest room so far. The ceiling is pretty high, too. Huh. Could be two stories. Maybe even more. Yeah, it might be more like three. This space could be utilizing the entire length of the ship. What's that huge Kamaboko-looking building in the middle? June pointed to the massive building in the center. Kamaboko? <laughs> well, I guess that's as good of a description of it as any. Um, can someone please explain to me what that is? Because I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What building are they talking about? Is, I see doorways, but is there a building? I'm sorry, maybe I should put, just put my glasses on. I can't... <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. Junpei and the others were standing on the scaffolding that crisscrossed the whole area. The proper term was catwalk. Junpei thought that didn't seem particularly important. I see stairs, so we may as well head over to them. Yeah, but this section's barely wide enough to fit one person. You're right. Nearby was a large iron staircase that made its way, eventually, to the floor beneath them. Whoa, you can't even tell the shape when you're this close. Let's check out the other side, too. I am confused. They moved around towards the opposite side of the massive building, following the catwalk. They hadn't said much as they walked, but as they approached the building, Ace suddenly spoke up. This looks to be the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yes, that thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. Cross-section of a mushroom? You see the three round doors near the bottom? No. <laughs> Not really. You mean the ones on the side over there? Am I just blind? Like, what? Coal is put into those and burned, which heats the water, producing steam. Okay. The same thing that drives a steam engine. This one is simply somewhat larger. I see. It doesn't appear to be running right now. The entire room was silent as the grave. All right, let's split up. Then, all of a sudden, Junpei heard a noise behind him. He turned, 
just in time to see June collapse to her knees. Hey, what's wrong? Are you alright? He dashed toward her and wrapped his arm around her shoulders to steady her. Hey, June. It was it was then that he noticed. Jumpy. You oh, you're you're really warm. What's wrong with her? Is your fever coming back? She had a fever? <laughs> yes. Yes. It probably is. But I'm fine. Please don't worry about me. I just need to rest. And I'll be fine. Rest where? <laughs> her voice was weak and forced, and it said a great deal more than her words did. Okay, okay. Uh, here, sit down. Uh, careful. Junpei carried her to the nearest wall and propped her up against it. She let her head fall back against the wall, as if she no longer had the strength to support it, and drew a, a ragged breath. Thank you. Her eyes were empty, as if she was having trouble focusing them, and even speaking seemed difficult for her. Junpei felt his hand ball itself into a fist and clench tight, his knuckles whitening. He had to find a way out, and quickly. He turned and looked at Ace and Santa in turn. Ace, Santa. Yes. Right. They might not have shared the depth of his emotion, but they certainly shared his concern. All right, let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm going to get you out of here real soon. She managed a small nod before leaning back to rest her head on the wall. Oh, it's seek a way out time. Time for me to be confused. <laughs> Steam engine room. All right, now I actually have to sit up. <laughs> I was just like, la la, sit back, relax, watch the movie. I don't remember how to do this. A tunnel. It goes all the way across the ship. I'd say this is probably here to move coal from place to place. It probably comes from over there. And then the belt carries it down the tunnel and out here. So, if the conveyor belt was moving... Yes. The coal would almost certainly come out of here. Look at that button. It's glowing orange, right? That's gotta mean something. I guess pressing it is the best way to find out what it does. I can read. <laughs> I guess pressing it is the best way to find out if it does something, Santa. I can't get over calling him Santa. Like, I can't. Nothing. It's a square... Oh. Nothing in here. Oh, look at the back wall there. I can see three small slots. Terminals for some sort of connector, perhaps? You mean, you think we're supposed to plug something in here? Perhaps. Like what? I don't know. I look at everything over here? Click. This pillar goes up towards the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't relevant. Golden gear. It doesn't look like it was always golden like this. Well then. I imagine it was prepared especially for this game. This gear is rusty. But it looks like it's still pretty sturdy. This. It looks like there's a door over there in this tunnel. The belt over there must deliver the coal, which is then picked up and thrown into this door. 
The door appears to be welded shut, however. Oh, so I can't ac access it? It's a bunch of wooden boxes over there by the wall. I already looked through those. There's nothing there. Okay. There's a barrel under the stairs. Sweet. Unfortunately, it's empty. This is the huge oven for this boiler. There are three open areas in it. Each of the open areas has a gear in it. Okay, thank you for sure. Oh, okay. Stairs to the upper floor. They're connected to the boiler. Okay, I clicked. The, I meant to click the stairs. What is this? Three sliders on the left are down, but this one is up. There are a number of lines engraved in these. I suspect we are meant to do something rather specific with them. Oh no! The puzzle solving! Junpei, why don't you move that slider down? Well, there's no harm in trying, I suppose. Nothing. Mm. Nothing happened. Maybe it needs to be prepared somehow. You're saying if we did something somewhere else, it'd respond somehow? Uh, yes. I suppose that's one way of putting it. Okay. The slider is down. Nothing. This thing won't budge. So all of them? No dice. This thing isn't going anywhere. Hmm. Nothing. It won't move at all. Thing? One of the doors on the furnace. There's an A on it. There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. Alright, let's give that sucker a twist. Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. We should, um, go in here. Alright. Let's go. Are we in? This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? We must be on the other side, yes. Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. Uh, yeah, because I'm major confusion. There are a whole bunch of boxes in my way. I can't get through. Okay, uh, wh where am I? <laughs> One of the great metal ribs of the ship. I think June's resting right underneath it. This? It's like hand-operated winch. A what? <laughs> um... Can you explain that in dum dum terms for me, please? It doesn't look like there's any way to, uh, operate it. That means the wheel isn't attached. The great. Well, to be exact, she's really kind of to the left, not straight below it. Uh, I guess that's not really an important detail right now. Anyway, we should be directly above the corner of the conveyor belt here. See on this door. Okay. That wall. Well, okay. Looks like that's the pipe. Looks like the bottom connects to the conveyor belt housing. Then coal must come out of this pipe, onto the conveyor belt. In other words, there must be a great deal of coal in that pipe. There are a number of boxes on the catwalk. I don't think we can go over there. Yeah, I guess we just have to go back. But no, this is B. We haven't even been in B. <laughs> There's our block. You have an excellent memory. Use that to draw a map inside your head. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not talented like that and cannot picture maps, okay? I failed geography. <sighs> that way, you won't get lost. Uh, I always get lost everywhere I go. Okay, I'm going back in B, I suppose. Yeah, if by catwalk, you mean narrow strip of metal. Junpei, are you brave enough to cross that? If you were to fall, you do realize that broken bones would be the least of your problems. I think that's part of the ship's structure. They're like the ribs that support the hull. What is this? Hey, Junpei, where are you going? The only thing in there is a closed numbered door. Kind of pointless to go back, huh? Yeah, sure is. Okay, I'm going back downstairs then. Go back down. I don't think I went this way. I went over there. I went over there. There are a number of these little windows along the inside of this thing. I think you're supposed to put coal through these, but they're welded shut. I don't think we can get those open. Um, I don't think I can do anything. I'm so confused. What am I supposed to do? Oh. There's a pair of wooden boxes here. There's nothing in them. Look, Ace. Some kind of snowman secret meeting. Um, those are just bags full of sand. You use them as counterweight when you're lifting something with a pulley system. He's like, come on, you uncultured swine. Man, you're too serious. It's a silver gear. Do you think it's made of pure silver? No way. Silver is way too soft to use for a gear. It's got to be steel or iron that's been coated with silver. Ugh. Shouldn't have called it a silver gear then. Shouldn't have got your hopes up. Were you thinking you'd haul this thing back? Nah. But I think Seven could probably carry it, don't you? Oh, I was just in there. There was a pillar like this on the other side. Yeah, you're right. Okay. What does that have to do with me at all? this what is this given its placement this must unlock the door to the left there's a weird indentation on the top of this thing you think that means you have to insert something here yes I would imagine so how does that help me it's a thick iron door blocking our way you think this is yes it looks like the exit it looks like this door slides up to the ceiling. How do I... How do I... Get the key? Help me. Help. Ayudame. Ayudame. Oh man, Junpei. I can't believe I missed something so important. What's so important? Look at those stairs. Look at them carefully. That gap. That height. That angle. It's perfect. Perfect? Perfect for what? Whatever, just bring Clover here right now. Tell her she needs to walk up and down these stairs. Huh? Clover's not here. What the hell is he talking about? Yeah, seriously, what is he talking about? Staircase that reaches up. Blah blah. 
Blah, 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 blah. These the stairs that he thinks are perfect? Silver gold. Door, it's a well front and won't open. I guess that's the same for all of them. The conveyor belt runs into a sort of arched tunnel. Okay. I need to find a way out, but how do I need to how will I find that key? What is this? I believe this opening is for fueling the furnace. If we were to put some coal in here and ignite it, then the steam engine might start working. It's certainly possible. Alright, are we gonna put... Are we gonna put stuff in there? The bottom of the massive boiler. And this thing's huge. I guess the ship needs something like that to power it. True, but I doubt a single boiler of this size could actually move a ship like this at any reasonable speed. You'd need at least three, no, four of these. Huh. I guess you know a lot about boats, huh? Well, not really. It's just common sense, you know. Is it? It's not really common sense for me. Tunnel goes all the way across the ship. The conveyor belt, it has nothing. What am I supposed to be doing right now? Can someone explain it to me in dum dum terms? Terms because I'm lost. happens when I move the slider down. The door we came through when we entered the steam engine room. Okay, can we leave? <laughs> yeah. I've got the wheel I pulled off from the other winch. This is a different- Oh my gosh, my dumb dumb self thought that this was the same one. Let's see if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit. Like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good. I should be able to turn this now. Could work, Junpei. We should be able to haul up the wooden box now. You see? The wooden box. It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope on the winch, isn't it? Why is he saying this over and over and over again? It looks like there's some sort of device in the box. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. At any rate, you might as well turn that wheel now. I'm counting on you. Okay. Alright. I'll turn the wheel. Huh. What's this? What happened? This wheel only turns to the left. It only turns to the left? <laughs> that means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah. We can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that'll be a problem. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I will be counting on you, Junpei. Uh, sure thing. No sweat. Did I let it down? I believe the box has reached the floor. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. 
The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt. June's down over by there. Junpei could see her, still leaning against the wall as if she barely had the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. Uh, yeah, uh, it's also been like 10 minutes. Give her some time, I think. Okay. Ace's expression was inscrutable, but he'd said what they had all been thinking. Well, of course not. She's not going to just get better right away, you know? It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself that what he'd said was true. What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's gotta be exhaustion. Santa's response was confident and certain. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. And you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. 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 We're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But does seem like a possibility, you know? You know? They stood there for a few more minutes, no one speaking, until Santa turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. Okay. We're leaving. We're going to bye bye. Adios. Oops. I meant to click the door. <laughs> Let's go down and see what it dropped. Go down. Go down. Where did it drop? Over here? No, it's the other side. Sorry. This. Control panel for something? What do I need this for? Some kind of machine. Maybe a control panel? Okay, that wasn't helpful. Um. Can I look at what's the item button again? Oh yeah, right here. Oops, wrong wrong button. Oh wait, there's the three. Oh, I know what I need to do. It goes in here. Maybe this hole is where the control panel goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. In you go. Dude, you did it. Everything looks alright. Okay. But what do we do now? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you press the button next to it? The orange one? The only- There's only one button. <laughs> Come on, Junpei. Yes. All right. I'll do that. Pushing. Sweet. All sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And... Oh, yes. I think I just heard something turn on. Oh? What's that? What happened? Junpei, look. The conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt... Well, I guess it's done moving now. There's still a bunch of coal on the belt, though. Oh, we need that. It looks like a bunch of it got dumped off the end of the belt and into the wooden box where we found the control panel. Okay, so we need to get that coal and bring it over um, from that thing. Um. Whew, sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> Cole. Cole, huh? 
Yeah, we need the coal. Box filled with coal. I keep. Why? A wooden box full of coal. Guess there's really only one thing we can do with this stuff. Okay, let's go here. Put it in here. There's a hole that'll let us put coal into the furnace. Maybe if we can get some coal in there, set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. All right, that's the last of it. No coal left on the wooden box. And nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into a cold furnace do anything? Ah, well, a man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke the furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up in there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, if you want to generate enough pressure within the steam power tur- What? <laughs> I can't read, apparently. In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine and drive the steam engine, right? Yeah, I guess that's the, uh, just of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. This furnace is enormous. So we're gonna need a whole hell of a lot more coal than this. Very well, then. If the three of us work together, then we should manage to fit it much faster. I... I want to help, too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up. Are... are you feeling up to that? Y yes Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Looks like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, alright? But... I... No arguing. You need your rest, so... You just stay there. We'll handle this. Okay. I... understand. All right, time for some manly work. <laughs> manly work. Let's get this coal into those furnaces. Okay, good. I don't have to do it. <laughs> Man, this is a lot of work. All right. I think this should be sufficient. All right. Now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. Um, what makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we gonna light it? Perhaps there's a device nearby that'll allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? Ha- like what? There's only one thing that... You can push... And it's this thing up here. Is this... I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we might ignite the furnace. Oh. <laughs> I guessed. <laughs> Alright. Let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei. Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Oh, they're moving. What is that? Is, isn't that what we need? The gears. They're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. What is this? Gold disc. The gold disc. It has a number of lines engraved in it. I can make out three colors here. Red, blue, and black. Hmm. I wonder what they mean. I don't know. 
Uh, let's go check the bronze one. We need this. The bronze disc. Are they, they're different patterns. Yeah. Um, and then the silver disc. Oh, uh, I did. Sorry. I need to go over here, I suppose. Um, how do I get into see the silver one? There it is. Silver disc. Uh, combine. M. This plus this. Don't I need to... Hello? <laughs> Don't I need to combine this? This plus... Oh? This plus this one? What? Alright, whatever. I'm going back up. Go up here, because clearly I need to use this. Looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like it's the outline of three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe... Maybe if we put those three discs we found into this thing. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Oh, I didn't even have to combine it. I'm like, hello, trying to combine. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Are you serious? Nothing's happening? I'm still stuck in here? Maybe you're... I don't know. Putting them in the wrong places? Perhaps you have them facing the wrong directions. Perhaps you should rotate the discs to make some of the lines connect to one another. Hmm. Well, no harm in trying. Instructions for operation. When the disc is clicked, it will rotate a certain amount. When the white arrow is clicked, the discs are switched. Please note that when the discs are switched, the angles for the discs are reset. Oh, I have to do it? Oh boy, oh boy. What a joyous time. The thing that's connecting the most is clearly this, this here, this red. Do I only have to connect the red? Or do I have to connect all the colors? Wait. Oh. The red lines on these discs. Oh, I thought I had to take all the colors. It was just the red ones. Oh my gosh. <sighs> my puzzle solving skills are not up to par. It's okay. I'm still having fun. That's what matters. <laughs> I think I can make this make a star polygon with these. Oh, we got out. That's it? Yes, the door's open. Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. Ace seemed to share his excitement. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get Jun now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We could just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. Yeah, he's like, I'm out. See ya. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down on the stairs petulantly. So are you only interested in being contrary? A sighed, with the air of a long-suffering parent. <laughs> Alright, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. He gave a quick nod to Ace and to Santa, and dashed off down the stairs. Which is not that far away. Before long, he was back on the first floor, next to the conveyor belt, and June. Oh, jumpy! Jumpy! <laughs> His nickname is so dumb. Though it's not as dumb as Santa. Like, I listen, I understand that it's from the Japanese word for three. San. But just just 
the fact that he's just Santa, I, I can't deal with it. As he drew closer, she stood up, slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Probably the latter. Let me check. Just to make sure, he reached out and put his hand against her forehead. <gasps> oh my god, he's touching me. Oh my god. <laughs> Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but she still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're all right? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I mean, <laughs> warrior. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> June giggled. <laughs> He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing her smile again made Junpei feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, then she really was feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. All right, let's go. Go where? Oh, right, I didn't tell you. We got the exit open, so... Great, let's go! Oh yes, June. You didn't help at all. June clasps her. I know she was sick. I'm just, I'm just being, I'm just messing with her, which is kind of silly because she's not real. <laughs> and she can't hear me. June clasped her hands together and nodded urgently. They headed back to the exit, but on their way, they found. Oh, it's. Santa? Okay, Santa was sitting on the stairs. Listen, the character design on Santa is my favorite. Um, I th he is my favorite character design. It's just his name that I'm like, really, Santa? Like, what's his real name? I want to know what his real name is. Santa was sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring at it with a strange expression. Junpei and June slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. Kid was cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. Oh, wait. He said was. Oh no. Oh no. He said was. She was only about an inch tall then? <laughs> June, just be quiet, please. <sighs> Santa glared at her. Oh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. Oh my god. June, read the room. Mm. Santa didn't smile or laugh. Sorry. Why are you looking at it? <sighs> He's like, are you stupid? He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. What? <laughs> Wait, what? This sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June, who shook her head. She didn't know either. Have you ever heard the story of the two Santa Clauses? No. <laughs> Unless he's talking about the... Wasn't there a Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen that was like... <laughs> there, uh, there was one where there was two of them and they were competing. Well, it wasn't exactly two people. One was like a, a wax dummy or something. That was a thing, right? <laughs> it's like a kid's movie. Is that what he's talking? No, that would be ridiculous. Of course that's not what he's talking about. <laughs> it goes that a long time ago, there were two Santas. One of them wore white, and the other one wore black. 
The white Santa gave presents to good kids. And the black Santa played tricks on bad kids. They went on like that for a while, but eventually the black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse. Pretty soon, the white Santa couldn't stand it anymore, and he stabbed the black Santa to death. Huh? When he stabbed the other Santa, the white Santa got blood all over his clothes. And that's why it's red? No. Is that a real story? I've never heard that before. And that's why, these days, his clothes are red. That's disturbing. You could say that red is all that's left of the Black Santa. Junpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. June was staring at Santa, sadness plain on her face. He continued. I wonder which Santa I am. Hmm. And it's probably, there's probably a reason they dressed him and his, his style and aesthetic is black and white. Makes sense. A white Santa and a black Santa. I, I think you're a good guy. <laughs> That's so awkward. Like, like, why are they just making sounds? <laughs> that feels like weird to me. It's kind of like, hmm, ha, hmm, ha. <laughs> All right, let's go. I want to see the picture. I want to see his sister. What happened to her? Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up the stairs. Taking them two at a time. Hmm. Oh, they're doing it again. They're making noises. Huh? Junpei and June looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Santa's voice echoed across the room from above them. Let's go. Yeah. They nodded and followed him quickly up the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. Ace was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. Oh, you're finally back. The door had shut, but it wasn't a cause of concern. Sorry we took so long. Yeah, they were reminiscing and discovering some of Santa's tragic backstory. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. Let's go. In single file, they walk through. After waiting for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Oh, jeez. A new room. Is this a warehouse? Am I going to have to solve this puzzle, too? No, I believe this is the cargo room. This must be where they store all of this vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and June had stopped unconsciously, pausing to take in their new surroundings. Santa's voice broke through their momentary trance. Well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going! Oh, here we go again. Seek a way out. Oh joy. Here we go again. We're in the cargo room. Okay. Okay. Let's just look at everything. These crates are quite large. They seem to be tied to one another with sturdy straps. A box. There's nothing inside. That. There are a bunch of bags here. I wonder what's in them. Oh, card with a headshot. That's this guy. 
was number nine. He died at like the very beginning. Card with the ninth man's face printed on it. It clearly goes into something. What's that? It's a card. It has a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah. I'm not really sure this what purpose this could possibly serve. These crates are a little smaller than the others. They look like they're the children of the other crates. Junpei, that sounds like some sort of fairy tale. Really? I don't know, man. You ever think about how crates would reproduce? No, because they don't. They're not alive. Sound like a fairy tale to me. Gosh, I can see some metal boxes on the other side of the fence. Uh, okay. There are three crates here, stacked up like stairs. If we climb up here, I think we can get over the fence. Junpei, think I could go take a look at that? Uh, sorry, but no thanks. Why? I've, uh, what are you, afraid of heights? Got a bad feeling about it. <laughs> Wuss. Okay, fine. I'll go. Please be careful, Santa. Yeah. But, just in case. Wait, what's he going to do with that screw? I don't see what throwing a screw at the fence is- Holy crap! Oh, it's electric. This- Oh man! There's- Electricity running through that fence. Looks like it. Then, we can't go to the other side. Well, we could jump off those crates, but we wouldn't be able to get back. Yeah, maybe then don't. I wonder what's inside all these crates. Wow, June, so helpful. What are you saying, Jumpy? There's a huge electrical current flowing out through that fence. If you do that, you won't be able to get back. Well, if I can move some of those crates over there... Are you even sure you can move them? What if they weigh too much? Then what are you going to do? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hadn't thought of that. Okay. Oh, it's Santa! Card with Santa's face printed on it. Are we going to show it to him? Like, hello, look at this. It's you. Oh, it's Clover. Snake. There's nothing in these crates. Oh. Ace. Are we going to find all nine? I don't know what's in these barrels. Judging by their weight, perhaps a liquid of some sort. A liquid of some sort. Let's go up. These stairs. They go up three stories. What are you waiting for, Junpei? Whatever, I'm going. This is the only door here, except for the one we came in through. Then this is the exit. No crap, Sherlock. Of course it's locked. Is it an electronic lock? No, just a keyhole right under the doorknob. So to open this door, we gotta find the key that fits that keyhole. Yeah. Can I look at it? There's a small keyhole. Can I- I can't look at it? Keyhole? There's a metal panel over the outside of the window. What is this? It's some sort of baki- bak- Baki? <laughs> Boxy device. 
Okay, you're not gonna look at it? The monitor's off. I've got a green switch here and a red one and some kind of lever. None of them seem to do anything, though. Maybe the power's off? Yeah, maybe. It's a single green light on the bottom, though. That means... What does that mean? I need to put in a code. This lock looks like it's covering something. It's like some kind of little shutter. Maybe it'll open if we do something. It's gonna come out of it if it does open. The key... Yeah, like, I'd know that. Well, there's six holes here. They look like jacks for a headphone cable. Jacks, huh? Then maybe if we put something in them... Yeah, something might happen. What is this, though? There are several lights here with numbers 1 through 9. Only the light with the 9 on it is lit. Why? Poor K. Scaffolding towards the staircase? Okay, what does that have to do with anything? Oh, what's that? I can see the machine. The spinning light on top of its head looks kind of cute. There are four crates lined up at equal intervals. A heavy looking metal box. A coffin? <laughs> There's something that looks like a coffin sitting on top of the pile of crates. What? We gotta go in there, right? Uh, no, I need to leave. How do I get out of here? Goodbye. How do I leave? Hello? Hello? God, how do I leave? Oh. Duh. I go? Oh, it won't let me. But I would have to go. What now? What do I do? What do I do now? What? What? Let's, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I'm miss- I don't have all of- How many of these do I have? One, two- or five sing song. I find the other one. Oh, there Hello? There was another area right over here. I didn't even see this place. We've searched all the boxes. There's nothing in them. Hey and June. Uh, do I have all nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Locked with P. Well, the boxes have numbers on them. Do they? Oh. Ace went down and picked up something that had been sitting next to the box. Junpei, let's take a look at this. Cards. Okay. Oh, okay, so I need to use these to open up. Uh, where's Ace in here? He's one. Now we finally have all nine picture cards. <laughs> we just need to insert these cards into the slots at the front of each box. Hey. 
Kaifei stared at the cards in his hands. Ace peered over his shoulder at them. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Uh, yeah, pretty sure. I th I think. Junpei gave him a look. Uh, yeah, of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers. Then you pop the corresponding card in the right box. So for instance, the card with the picture of Ace on it goes into box one. The card with the picture of Snake on it goes into box two, and so on. Oh, uh, I see. Huh? What is it? Junpei thought he might have imagined it, but he could have sworn Ace stiffened. I'll leave the rest to you. What? Why is he being weird? He quickly turned and walked away. What's wrong with him? Yeah, he's being weird. Oh well, whatever. Doing his best to clear his mind for the task at hand, he turned back towards the boxes. 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 <laughs> I, I can't speak. Time to solve the nine boxes puzzle. Okay, just put the things in there. Nine cards with pictures and nine boxes. Junpei stared at them for a moment, then began. Ace's card is in box one, Snake's is in number two. I just need to do the same for the rest. Duh. And finally, the ninth man's card into box nine. All nine box lids popped open at once. Yeah, oh, they opened. He peered inside. What the? In each box was a single pin. Nine what? Pins? What does that have to do with anything? Wait! It fits in the jacks on that thing. They looked a little like sewing pins, but much thicker. I guess I'll take them with me. Junpei collected them all quickly and shoved them into his pocket. Okay, I think I know where to take these. These look like the kind of pins you use for sewing. There are nine of them in total, and they have numbers on them that run from one to nine. Okay. I think I know where to take them. Let's go up. Are there... There are six holes here, and it looks like the pins I found would be a perfect fit for them. But there are six... The ones you found in the nine boxes, right? Well, why don't you try it? Alright, let's see what happens. I think two, four, and six should go on the top part, and three, five, and seven on the bottom part. Well, some of them lit up. Are you serious? What kind of- what is this? Oh my goodness. Yeah, three and six. wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which light goes on. Well, I put the two, four, and six pins in the top part, and the- Three, five, and seven pins on the bottom. Hmm. You think... I think maybe it's the digital root? Ugh. Listen, this is my least favorite part of this whole game. I'm not a fan of the digital root nonsense. But it's like the... You add the numbers together, and then you add... The sum of those numbers together to get the digital root right? Why is that... Ugh. It's my least favorite part of this game. The digital root? 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals 12. The digital root of 12 is 3. Therefore, light 3 turns on. 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 15. The digital root of 15 is 6. Therefore, light 6 turns on. Makes sense, right? Yeah. I see. The lights that match the digital root of the pins inserted on the top and lower parts will light up. So that's how it works. But will they stay lit up? Well, there's only one other thing I'd like to check. Well, if he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So... He put the 1, 2, and 3 pins on the top, and the 6, 7, 8 pins on the bottom. Oh. They turned off. Huh? 6 plus 7 plus 8 equals 21. 
Digital Route 21 is 3. Therefore, Light 3 turns off. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. Digital Route 6 is 6. Therefore, Light 6 turns off. Oh, I get it now. If the digital route for the pins you insert in the same... is the same as the number on the lights that are lit, those lights turn off. Yeah, looks like that's the trick. Alright. Now we know how it works. You want to give it a try? Wait. You mean you know what we're supposed to do with these lights? Well, no, but I figure we could try and see if we can turn them on... Turn them all on, you know? I figure something's gotta happen if we can manage that. Turn on the lights, huh? Okay, Junpei. Let's make sure we know how this works, alright? Pick one of the six holes, then pick one of the pins in your hand and insert it into the hole. Keep it up until all six holes are filled. Once all the- oh my gosh. However, if a digital route corresponds to a light that is already on, that light will be turned off. The goal is to turn on all the lights at once. All right, let's do it. Oh, good gosh. Um, let's. I want to do the two, four, six again. Let me do that. Two, four, six. Was it three, five, seven? They did. Okay, so I have to find something that's a digital root as one. It would have to equal the ten. Four, five, one, 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 four, five. That should turn on the one, and then this one. Um, two plus three plus six, two, three, six, eleven. We'll make it twelve or two, whatever. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. Kind of. Sort of. Ugh. Okay. Four. I'd have to find a four. One plus fourteen. Something that equals fourteen. Seven. Six. One. It'll turn on the four. Actually, I have to turn on the seven. Eight. Four. Wait, no, 8, 4, 5 will turn on the 8. Okay, okay, okay! Um, I'm feeling a little bit proud of myself now. <laughs> so the 4... Turn on the 4. 9... Plus 1, plus 9, 1, 3... Thirteen, which would make fourteen. Let's try that one on nine, one, three, and seven. Four plus seven. Wait, four and six is ten. Oh, well, that won't work. Four and five, nine, seven, sixteen. Okay, four, five, seven. Oh, I did it! F, what is this? F! Give me another puzzle. Why would you do that? I, just when I was feeling so smart. All the lights are on. The shutters opened up. Hey, does that mean... Uh, yeah, we gotta do it again. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Man, I thought I was doing so well. Yeah, me too, Junpei. I was so proud of myself. Okay, so we've got nine holes, and there's an F above them. Oh, I don't understand the letters. I don't know what the F means, but I do know one thing. What's that? This time, there's nine holes. So we need to insert nine pins. Are you serious? Man, that's boring. Well, why don't you give it a try, alright? This F... Alright. How do I do that again? I need to go back for a second. I need to look at something. 
Oh. To look at something. To look at the. I need to look at the menu. This. No, that's not what I wanted. That's not at all what I wanted. I wanted. Um. What is it? Yeah, this. This. Um. Not the digital route, it's the other one with the letters. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't remember. Um. Um. That Check me. Map screen controls, calculator controls. I forgot how to do the letter. I need to look it up. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know how to do the letters. I thought it would have wouldn't it have like it has digital roots here. Like I understand the digital roots, but with the letters I don't understand. F F is the Letter in the alphabet. Six letter in the alphabet. Does that have anything to do with anything? What? <sighs> oh, come on. There has to be something. Where does it talk about items? Finding items? No. Any games? Flow chart. I don't care about the flow chart. I want to know the digital route. Blah blah blah. Right? I don't know what the heck this is. I think maybe this F means fifteen. Why would it mean fifteen? I don't listen. When they start putting letters in there, I don't understand what's going on. Fifteen. Yeah, 15 and base 10 is F and hex, right? Bro, <laughs> you're asking the wrong person. I have no idea. You're right. Yeah, that's gotta be it. All right, let's give this one more shot. 15, okay, what does that have to do with literally anything? So, I'm looking at a walkthrough <laughs> for this section in particular because I don't understand this even a little bit. I could do like the... Um, digital route or whatever. Okay, that I had. I didn't really have a problem. This I'm having a problem. So it says here the next puzzle is called a magic square. You're supposed to make every row, column, and diagonal of three equal to F, which is hexadecimal for 15. <laughs> Those are two sets, and I don't understand any of it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting so much math in this game. I knew there was so much math. I... To figure it out on your own, figure out which two numbers you would need to add to each pin to get 15. For example, to get 15 if you use pin 1, you would need to add either 8 plus 6 or 5 plus 9. These are some of the ways to get 15 if you use pin 1. Okay? Doesn't make... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Some of the other pins have more combinations that add up to 15. But the pins that have the smallest number of ways to add up to 15, put them in positions where they only contribute to a small number of sums. For example, the middle pin has to have four ways to add up to 15, but the pin in the corners only need to have three ways to add up to 15. And the pins that form a diagonal around the center pin only need you have two ways to add up to 15. I can't. I'm looking at one way to solve the solution. I'm sorry. I can't. What? I I read that. I don't. <laughs> Even the walkthrough. I'm like, I don't understand this. Doesn't make any sense to me. At all. So it says 276 at the top. 
seven and six at the top. The middle nine five one. How does that? I this I don't understand. Okay, how does? How would it add up to fifteen? Five and seven. Five. So, I I don't understand it at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Four three eight. Thank you. Walk through. I don't understand it at all. <laughs> Here we go. All pins inserted. All lights lit. Yeah. How that happened? Uh, I had to cheat. <laughs> I didn't. Know, I. I still like. I. I read here. You can do this to solve it on your own. Um. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's too complicated. I've. I know that with puzzle games, you don't want it to be too easy, but you also don't want it to be too complicated either. And I'm not smart enough for these kinds of puzzles with all these numbers. We did it. Power's on now. Looks like there's electricity going up to the monitor to the top now. All right. Let's see if we can activate the device on the top. What device on the top? Oh, the right here. A green button, a red button, and a lever. I wonder what these do. I think this might help. What? What the hell is this? Where did he find this? What is that? Where'd you find it? I found it when you were messing around with the pinholes. Looks like instructions for this thing. According to what it says here, this thing's a remote control for that. That? Yeah, that. That what? Oh my gosh, speak! What's he pointing- Oh. That machine over there. Apparently it's called the Pushmaster 5000. Are you serious? Whatever. So we're just supposed to- What are we supposed to do with the Pushmaster 5000? Push the boxes? See the coffin over at the top of the crates? Uh, yeah. Don't you want to know what the deal is with it? Not really. I just, I want to get out of here. I don't want to be in this room anymore. I don't want to look at numbers anymore. Uh, I do. You want to check it out? Yeah. Alright. How do you think we're going to get there? Uh, well... Well, there were some crates on the right side of the fence that somehow piled up like stairs. Maybe if we make a path to the coffin from there... How'd we do that? Line up the crates, I guess. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm I'm so much confusion. <laughs> you know, you know that vine. I am confusion. That's me throughout this whole game. This <sighs> I understand that puzzles. You don't want it to be too easy because then it's like, oh, it's too easy. But I feel like some of these puzzles are too hard. That might just be me, though. I'm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Oh, looks like the Pushmaster 5000 runs off battery. So, to keep it from using up its energy too fast, it's been programmed so that it'll only start moving once its path has been completely programmed in. Are you serious? Alright. I'm supposed to look around and determine where it's supposed to go? I don't know if my spatial awareness is that good. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not good at anything. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. New material has been added to the file screen. Where? Where's the file? Let me in. What? what? This? No. What was added? I Instructions for a machine called the Pushmaster 5000. Santa found it in the cargo room. In order to prolong battery life, it is advised that you first simulate your actions before carrying them out. <sighs> Sorry, it's so late. Oh my god, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Pull the lever to begin the simulation. 
I need to get out of here so I can go to sleep. <laughs> alright. Just keep in mind there's a limit on the battery, alright? Battery dies after 50 moves. 50? Girl. At least that's what it says in the manual. He moves, huh? Also, keep in mind that the Pushmaster 5000 can't move the heavy metal crates. Okay? Got it. The square adjacent to the Pushmaster 5000 is clicked. The Pushmaster 5000 will move to that square. I'm on the verge of crying. <laughs> If there is a crate in the way, the Pushmaster 5000 will push up to a single crate. Move the crates appropriately and efficiently and fill the yellow areas. Ugh. Fill the yellow areas? I don't understand. What does that have to do with anything? Finally! What do I do next? Just be quiet and watch. See? It's moving already. I don't want to play anymore. Awesome. Pushmaster 5000 just did what I just... Did just what I told it to and... Lined up all the crates. Great. Now we can reach the coffin. We just need to climb those crates over by the fence. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. <coughs> I will continue this in the next episode. Because I can no longer play this game. Well, and also keep my sanity at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, I'm a little frustrated right now. I'll not, it is not all of the puzzles, but like the puzzles in this room in particular have been really difficult and I've been really frustrated. Um, I'm worried now that as it's getting towards the end, according to the flowchart, um, as it gets towards the end, it's pretty, pretty close to the end here. I don't, you know, um, I do worry that... The puzzles are just going to get harder and I'm not <laughs> capable. Okay. But anyway, I am going to end it here and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.